Welcome to a very special episode. We have a guest all the way from Australia, Jock Dom, here to teach us how to build the best shark deck. And after that, we will be testing out the best shark deck on Master Duel. So make sure to stick around till the end. Let's get going. Master Rule 6 is one day closer. Tonight's guest got to top 32 of YCS Sydney with sharks in I would describe an ocean of snake eyes. Welcome to the show. How's it going, guys? My name's Jeff Dom, and um, I played uh, sharks at the um, YCS in Sydney about a month ago. Yeah, so a definite uh, unique pick for the event. Yeah, well, there's there's so much snake eyes going on right now. Um, and I was going to ask you about that. How are you enjoying current meta? Because not just in TCG, but in OCG and Master Duel, Konami like made sure to release these Snake Eyes cards. So they're basically at full power. Are you enjoying this meta or you think it's a little too centralizing? <laughs> um, of course, it's a tier zero format. So like everyone's going to jump to the to the main deck of the format and, and play it. That's what I expected at um, YCS Sydney. It was just going to be a lot of Snake Eyes. And um, it's a unique format. It's 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 fun. I feel like Snake Eyes and Vikings are unique. They do a lot of things, but overall not too... It's just better than every other deck. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the combination of, of so many free starters. The deck basically has no bricks. Um, and the deck's main kind of poor interaction it has is this like pushing you into the back row mechanic which i i really think is quite interesting i've never you know they've never really done anything like this um as like a full archetype so i i personally am enjoying playing in snake guys i think it's fun um but i'm glad you're glad to hear you're finding an interesting format as well um i was gonna ask um going back to the event uh talking about the sharks matchup you know you built this sharks deck obviously with snake eyes in mind when you you know, played game one, and you saw it with Snake Eyes, you had a sideboard, what were you switching in, or was your main deck just so focused on Snake Eyes, you didn't need to switch anything? Honestly, um, I thought that with the deck itself, I didn't get much time to prepare, because I didn't actually play test at all throughout the week, or even leading up onto Friday, I, I hadn't play tested at all. Um, really? I, initially got it. I was initially got to play Branded, um, Despia. Yeah. And, um, didn't I didn't want to learn because I got my hands on a um, uh, gimmick puppet of Nightmare. Oh, you were going for the gimmick lock. Wow. Savage. It feels like, <laughs> it feels like everyone's going for the gimmick lock, but if they get their gimmick lock off, they just, I guess, don't know what to do with the branded deck. Yeah. Felt like, felt like um, I didn't want to learn all the branded combos overnight. I just went in a safe bet and uh, made a shark deck list on the Neuron app. Yeah. With about 30 minutes before registration um, closed. And, and I just submitted that in and um, went to uh, my Airbnb and just made the deck in real life. Then um, showed up on the Saturday and Sunday for the event. So had you played had you played Sharks before this and you had most of the deck for? Um, cause like clearly you were pretty familiar with the deck. I know you said you built it in 10 minutes, but this looks like someone who at least is familiar with the shark archetype. Of course. Yeah, of course. Like, um, like the thing about it is it has such a niche play style and it's very unique. Like you, if you don't know some of the lines and, and combinations of, um, plays, it's just like, so a lot of people seem to think that you just make the shin and pass. Yeah. Two, two rank four. Yeah. It's a rank four. You make one rank four and pass. And I mean, I played the deck in Master Duel. I know it's a little different. We'll, we'll talk about that in a bit. But um, a lot of the time, I know you, you joke that make Kraken and pass is is going to be one of your plays uh, fairly often, especially in Master Duel where we don't have Toad. But I was going to ask you about some of the deck choices you made. And I don't know if this was just because you were making it quickly. But one of the cards you don't have any copies of is uh, Tune, you Tuneful Princess. And this is like... I kind of considered when I first started playing Sharks that Tuna was like one of your core extenders because it's it's like copies 4, 5, and 6 of Buzzsaw, which is your only real one-card starter engine that doesn't require a second card to get going. So was there a reason you we didn't play it? Honestly, it's a, it's a on and off thing with, with the fish deck um, because I have, when I started playing it, like I, I've obviously played Sharks before the event um at a local and regional capacity it's just like a fun deck that i play um it's like i, I don't want to be too competitive i just want to just have fun on the day um but 
um, yeah, I, I go in and out of um, the Eternal Princess because it's such a, it is a good card. You can combo it with one for one. You can get a monster into the grave uh, for white mirror and such and get a Eternal Princess out to extend. But I just felt like um, there's so many hand traps being played at the moment. Obviously, Ash is one of them that, um, yeah, I just didn't consider trying to put it in. Um, another thing I had was I played a regionals um, where I got top four and my only loss, I think, was to Wanderies. Oh, yeah. I had I need a, this um, like similar deck list, but with less normal summons. And um, in games one, one I spent four turns not drawing any normal summons. <laughs> <laughs> in draw a normal summon and I use some confusion, which is something else you'll see I don't play instead. Yeah, no instant fusion here. Like instant fusion can get you to a rare fish or a mud dragon, but super polymerization can also get at mud dragon. But um, it's definitely something I would consider in the future playing. But um, the whole point of it was bring out rare fish and um, try and make a rank four as a like with a starter. So I opened yep. up um, in end and Gozen or something, and it was terrible. But they normal Robina, they tried to trigger something, and I just changed Gozen, and that was game two. Game three. They, I ashed a Robina, they passed, I didn't draw any normals, four turns, five turns, oh, I ended up doing normals. That's rough. Let's see it. I found when I was playing this deck that often I would draw one of the two pieces, and I, we're going to talk about TCG only legal plays, but if your monster doesn't have, has materials left over, you can't rank them up. And I found very frequently I was drawing one of the pieces. I wanted to rank up my, you know, Armor Fortress into the uh, Full Armor Dark Knight Lancer, but to do that, you have to have no materials on him. So sometimes I was like ranking him up on a Bahamut and he would have two materials and I had one of the pieces in hand. I can't clear the materials. So I, I, what I was doing was using Bahamut, making a rank three shark and then using that to rank up. But I guess in that case, you're probably just gonna make Toa, right? If that's your, if that's your line and you just can't. Exactly. Like, another thing to consider is that with the Bahamut, it, the deck can eat hand traps, and you, a lot of people remaining, I guess, Ash, Imperm, Vela, Borna, and um, Nibiru in the main. Yeah. So you're trying to get at your your Toad first thing, it's like, it's, it's like a must. Yeah. Um, yeah. Another thing to consider is, with um if you draw into one it's something i put in like my recommendations honestly for the extra deck i was running two crack and spawn and i was uh, yeah. i'd say in future we try and run one and try and play a Tugaras. so Tugaras can get me a draw two and a discard one so it can discard one of the um that's if i draw into one of the xc's armors and then i think you can overlay the xc's armor fortress to just get the search one that's why we play Xyz Remora as well. Like we try and make it so that we can um, do funny plays with um, the alteration of the X Y Z materials. Mm, yeah. And for like if you if you summon out like uh if you have if you've opened one of your bricks and like say you summon out Silent on an arc, you can detach two um, materials to just summon uh, to steal one of their monsters. Uh, that's clever, yeah. To get the materials down so you can rank up in the armor fortress and get your searches. That's clever, yeah. What yeah, you can try and do plays that are like, like let's say you don't want to steal their monster, right? And you just summon out the silent on arc, and then you overlay into the um, Xyz armor fortress. You detach two because it, it's got three materials now. It's just got the silent on arc and the two level fours you used to make it, or the two bodies. And then you detach two to search two. Detach one to search one, and then you detach two to special summon the XYZ reward. Yeah. Things to this card's extremely powerful. You talked about Toad being like the critical card to make. In Master Duel, we don't have Toad. We also have Max C. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna show you. We're gonna talk. We're gonna talk about. I, I'm gonna show you the deck that I built trying to replicate this. If I were to play it in in Master Duel, because it's it's a it's a very different format in a lot of ways. Yeah, I, I've actually played Master Duel. Um, not much, but I played the uh, when I first when Master Duel first came out. They had I think the XYZ festival, and uh, yeah. I played Sharks during that X festival where I think Toad was at one maybe. Yeah, I'm not sure because. <laughs> Toad was at the, when the game started. He was he was still free. Yeah. Okay, so um yeah, I, I played that and um what I noticed as well is like like of course you got to watch out for Maxi and the whole format is dependent on on surviving Maxi like doing the accepting the Maxi challenge. 
Yes. <laughs> that you, uh, that, like, you, it's hard because you have to optimize the deck or master tool. Like, it's hard to fix that deck um, because we're not, we don't care about that feel like in that format. Yep, that a three, four by one. And um, of course, we, we're main, I think a lot of people are maining Groll or maining Ash. So there's several outs, like like on the first instant of drawing one, you draw and neither player adds and it hurts. But like there are some outs too if Maxi was in the TCG, but that's something we don't, we fortunately don't have to worry about. Yeah, it's, it's your spoiled over there uh, with the no Maxi. Yeah, like, like you can see that it, it's hard to translate that deck or convert it over to Master Door. And there's something like to consider with Master Ball. I think you guys have Super Poly at two or three still. We do is Super Poly. I would put in that deck. I would try and put Super Poly and try and put in a Blood Dragon. And um, like like you've got a bit more flexibility. I think is SP Little Light. Um, uh, oh, we don't have that. We don't have that one yet. No, we have full full power Snake Eyes, but no SP Little Knight. We're in a, yeah. a very weird timeline. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's something you can consider because um, the only reason I mentioned SP is for the Mud Dragon too. If you want to link it off, um, or if you want to link up Guru and get a draw one to go into S um, SP before doing any of your rank four plays. But yeah, Super Poly. If you play three Super Poly, I'll would, I would probably play three Super Poly and, and a Mud Dragon. Honestly, if you if if Snake Eyes is it's like a it's like a going hectic over there, definitely something to consider. For example, like Super Poly in this makes it so that you can discard orders that you want engraved, or it helps with discarding multiple copies of Ice Barrier. So we don't have to worry yeah. about just getting foolish goods into the in, to activate the one-off foolish barrel goods. We've got multiple ways to discard, it, and that's through um, Super Poly and Forbidden Droplets. So that's one way to, to get things going. But the whole format, you're right, is dictated by Maxi, so <laughs> it's hard to translate it over. Yeah, I know. I um, I was gonna ask you. This is more general questions. If you were put in charge of TCG or or Master Duel format, what would you ban or what would you unban? If you get like one, they gave you one freebie. What would you do? This is a tough one. You can think. You can think a little bit. Yeah. Like I honestly haven't looked too much on on the ban list, but I'll fire out. It's a. This <laughs> is too much power. You're not ready. You were ready. Yeah, exactly. I'm not ready to to. <laughs> I, I think it'd be probably like a one-off sacky card oh you, you'd free you'd free something that's like at, at zero because it was kind of busted you'd let us have it at one just uh, to have a little fun here well well I would, we can get some ideas here um oh like pot of greed would you would you let the pot of greed go to one honestly like seems it has no restriction so you could just go like you can do things funny if like funnily if like your opponent does something you go I'm thrust into talent. I <laughs> agree. Yeah, thrust into pot of greed. I love it. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's definitely something like like it'd be something that try like we could try things like the volatile chain. I think it's still banned. That would be funny trying to uh, put that out there and seeing what comes off it. Yeah, what level like like chain was detached Sandicard is full of Um, yeah, so yeah. detached Sandicard. Oh. Like, um, that would be pretty funny. I know Tillerman is still, like, a, a deck in DCT, so they'd probably go straight for that one. <laughs> yeah, they would probably go straight in tier limits. You'd, you'd use it to foolish bear your tier limits. Yeah. Just, like, like there's just certain cards that would just... You, you just want to see how they'd go in, in coming back to one. Like, Maxi is definitely one that would be sacky, but... Um, oh, one Maxi. That that would be <laughs> that would be salt-inducing. I, I would hope yeah. they'd never do that. <laughs> <laughs> that would definitely be salt inducing knowing that your opponent could open a one off <laughs> Whenever someone plays Paul by the Great, it does feel like that. Like that's it feels similar to that type of stack. That is fair. We I mean we have two call by the grave, so we say it twice as often as you guys do, but uh, I agree. Call by is kinda of sacky when they draw it. alright, so so I know you you like the sacky cards. Um I was gonna I was gonna give you the chance if you could you know, you played sharks a lot. You know the strengths, weaknesses of the deck. If you could design a new shark card, what role do you think it would fill? Like, do you think the deck needs another starter, like an extender? Does it need a new extra deck monster? Like, what's the deck missing to kind of push it into like the higher tier? It's definitely something like I, I try and think about. I think genu genuinely, Nami need to make sharks a mech circular. 
Uh, they need a free. They need a free special summon that combo full combo from the hand for free. Yeah, circular. More than one that. Also a bonus in the graveyard. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, a, cir a circular for sharks would definitely be uh, very powerful. Um, yeah, I'll pull up. I'll pull up Mathmex circular for for anyone at home who forgets. Imagine, it seems to be the trend nowadays that Konami is just making a circular for every deck that they want to be competitive so like if sharks got a you could send one fish monster <laughs> to the grave especially yeah. coming for free and then let's say it has another effect if you it, like read that that's it, it's if this card is 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 a joke yeah but also something I've, I've wanted for a long time now is a rank four fish i don't think there's a single single rank four fish in the game that is that is something we can check right now uh yeah. is there really not not a single one it, not I I I'm, I don't think it's a single rank four fish. Hold on, we'll, we're gonna check. We're gonna check live. This is a bold statement, and we're gonna confirm if it's true. Uh, fish rank four Z. There's none. What is Konami doing? I I I never I never realized these are all aqua. We got sea serpent. Wow. And, and we call this deck fish. This deck is meant to be a fish XYZ deck, but there's not a single right for fish to actually summon. So if we had like a, like we need, we either need three things to get going. And I know Konami's releasing a new set, I think with oh, the water. I think it's, this. yes, that's right. Like I said, we need, we need either sharks or fish circular. <laughs> fish circular, yeah. We need... And an actual fish XC, yeah. Yeah. Or we need like a in deck monster that like is a boss monster, like it has some type of decent effect um for like like fish. Something we can definitely so those are the three suggestions I'd have is is a shark circular, a rank for fish that's actually good, or a boss monster that's a bit like easier in the sense to I mean Silicanth is very nice, but like we just need something to match like twenty twenty three twenty. Oh yeah. We, we need an upgrade, you're right. And I, I agree, I hope that that new set uh, does bring support yeah. for Sharks. I think it's probably gonna bring yeah. Mermail support. I'm, I wanna see a 2024 Mermail card uh, because I feel like that could be very strong. We're gonna be summoning on opponent's turn. It's gotta be, it's gotta be one of those discard cards summon on your opponent's turn effects. Uh, we got those turn zero plays going. Yeah, like a main phase quick effect, like definitely something to consider. But um, I'm hoping that with this Shark talk, Konami seen that there's a bit of viability, um, competitive viability. Oh yeah, they saw, they saw you. They know people love it. Yeah, <laughs> like hopefully they make some form of water support because they did announce it like three weeks, I think, after the top. So, yeah, hoping, hoping it, they they make some form of support that's actually good. I I agree, and and we always have if if Konami OCG. I don't know if they pay attention to OCG. The OCG doesn't care about TCG. But the TCG people get to make their own cards. So they saw you play this deck. They also made the Goaty archetype. That was a TCG only archetype. Um, so the TCG guys, they know that we love the fish. So you're right. I hope they, they pick it up and they make a, a stronger fish deck because everyone loves it. Well, um, thanks so much for joining the show. Um, appreciate you spending the time to chat about sharks. And hopefully we can have you on sometime again in the future. Um, yeah, so thanks a lot. No worries at all. Thank you for your interview and questions. Yeah, definitely a fun, fun little geek spin on, on the deck and um, just explaining everything about it. Yeah, it's definitely a good deck, very unique, and um, hopefully more people pick it up. All right. Made sure to listen closely because uh, Josh gave a lot of great advice during that interview. Uh, actually had to cut a bunch. If you guys want to hear the whole interview, it was almost an hour long. I had to trim it down to fit time. If you want to hear the whole interview, let me know in the comments. I can uh, publish the whole one if you want to listen to the whole thing. Uh, but for now, we're testing out Shark's opponent. Going second, hitting us with the effect Veiler, trying to stop our Shark plays. Will be be able to make the Kragen and pass? Looks like no, Kragen denied. But... We are following uh, the advice of the master here with the double super poly. I got triple super poly in this list, and we got some forbidden droplets. So we'll hope we can disrupt our opponent, and we'll see what they're doing. And of course, they're playing snake eyes, just like, just like he predicted. It's like we read the future. Opponent playing snake eyes, one of their snake eyes play. Now we can wait till they summon uh, two fire monsters with different attributes, which is something they sometimes do, but. Why don't we just disrupt him right now and make a super poly, super poly play, turn him into the old Garura, 
If we send Garuda to the graveyard with our Forbidden Droplet, we will draw an additional card. Opponent gonna set the Snake Eyes Ash in the back row, get the Divine Temple, set the Flamber's Dragon, but they got no more plays. We disrupted them. Snake Eyes was disrupted with the Super Poly. Let's try and bust off Shark, make an XE. Opponent hitting us with the Imperm. All right, you know what? They're kind of saving us from our mistakes there a little bit. If we did make the XE, they'd be able to summon the Flamber's Dragon, summon the Ash. We would have had to eat the Flamber's Dragon and hope this uh, disruption did not disturb us. And that Ash is going to go plus a million. So uh, we did get saved a little bit. Let's use this to our advantage. Deal some battle damage to the opponent. As long as we don't summon anything, these boys are stuck in the back row, which is not too bad. Oh, opponent, you get an additional turn. Summon in the Ash. We are going to negate that. Now, I thought really hard about sending this Guru to the graveyard, but... We send this Armored XZ to the graveyard, we keep the Guru on field, we can deal another 3,000 damage to the opponent, and uh, 3,000 plus 16 is actually lethal, so let's see if we can pull it off. We shall see. We do have to clear this Snake Eyes Ash first, which uh, might be difficult to do. Uh, opponent going into the Link Karibo. Alright, Link Karibo probably going to keep them alive, but if we can bust out Shark it away, then maybe we can get through and get some big damage and get lethal but here's my thoughts all right we summon anything these boys coming up out of the back row getting summoned let's just deal some damage now and use our secret shark play to try and push for lethal afterwards link three will reducing the attack of the bust off shark we get 3000 with the garura let's try and xz get that right hand shark opponent gonna summon the flamberge Opponent gonna use the Flamburst to summon that Snake Eyes Ash. Let's go into the Stealth Kragan, and we are threatening lethal. May Opponent may not know what this card does, but the Jelly Sting is lethal damage. We gotta hope that this is not some sort of negate. So we're gonna hold, try and bait the negate, if that's what it is, with XZ Remora. Opponent summoning the Snake Eyes Ash, gonna search for the Kurikara. Gonna try and steal our monsters, I don't think so. Detach two, XZ Remora. Summon two fish from the graveyard. The secret card was called by the grave. Let's get poppin'. Pop that Snake Eyes Flamber's Dragon, and if, uh, if this doesn't work, we go to the next turn and do it again. An opponent, lethal with the Jelly Sting. Love to see it. Let's go on to the next game. I will have the full upgraded decklist at the end of the video. So make sure to stick around if you want to see and test this out. And we do have an XZ Festival coming. Uh, well, XZ Synchro Link Festival. So we'll see how that works. All right, we're using the old Shark play all right you get the abyss shark out and you search your xe remora make the stealth crag in and now you got a remora line remora detached two summon two additional fish from the graveyard and now we can make two more xz's bahamut shark would be making a toad here but we do not have toad so we're going to go into the armor torpedo our rank it up armor fortress since we got this xz in the hand already all right if we didn't have the xz in the hand what we do we'd rank up on the bahamut shark Detach two materials, search both pieces, but we only got we only got, we already got one in the hand. So let's search that full armor Z. Summon the Dark Knight Lancer. Activate the armor. Equip. Now this boy cannot be targeted. Alright. XZ armor torpedo. While it's attached to a monster as material, a opponent can't target it with card effects. And if it battles, it negates all of face up monster effects they control. So a uh, very powerful effect on this uh little boy but uh, not as good as the toad let's activate get this back to the hand we even got the goes in match so opponent is playing the water field and you know everyone who plays the water field they're not always playing a water deck but they very often are so goes in match likely not going to do anything but goes in plus stealth crag and can shut down a snake eyes player uh real fast we're gonna leave our two monsters here just like this leave them because we can xz with the full armored xz uh, as long as we control another Z monster, we can rank up, uh, do an XZ summon on the opponent's turn. Pony, Lava Goleming, our two best cards there, the Kragen and uh, our Ar Armored Lancer are gone. And uh, yeah, we have no more interaction plays other than this full armor. And it looks like opponent is playing a water deck, so goes in match, not going to do anything. Let's fire off the full armor. XZ summon into the Stealth Kragen. Dragon is here to get pop in. Opponent. Summoning that Agerine. Now they aren't allowed to normal summon because they summon this Lava Golem. So let's pop the Agerine before they get a Synchro playoff. Opponent called by the Grave targeting the other Kragen in the graveyard. But opponent doesn't know. We can dodge. Activate full armored XZ. 
equip our Kragen in the graveyard to our Kragen, but boosting its attack by the attack of the Kragen and dodge the finger. Full Armored XZ dodging the finger. Very sweet. And that's going to get that pop going. Adrian be gone. And opponent can't handle it. They got beaten by the Kragen dodge. Love to see it. Let's go on to the next game. All right, on to the next game. Now, if you're going to test out sharks in the XZ Synchro Fusion Festival, you let me know. Uh, you can't play Super Poly with this deck, but you can just throw in. Uh, if you stick around to the end, I'll, I'll mix things up with this deck list and show you what you should side in uh, for the festival. Because it does have a very specific uh, requirements, like Turtle is not allowed. Let's go into that Armored Fortress. And you saw I was using the Dugaris, just like uh, Jock suggested. We swapped in Dugaris, lets you draw and discard. That can let you discard your full armored XE to the graveyard, also your Ice Barrier to get search in. Um, what did we use it for? Well, we just used it to rank up our Armor Fortress into, uh, yeah, from the Dugaris to get that one search going. And uh, just wanted to test out how it was, you know, test out the line, how it works. Now we can, since we ranked up the Dugaris, we got all waters on the field, we can fire off that Abyss Shark, get Shark in, get the Crystal Shark, summon and go into stealth kragen now we've already done uh one two we've done a lot of summons all right we've done one two three four five six seven summons so nibiru is always a problem but without toad we have no way to negate nibiru anyway we just gotta hope they don't have it let's detach two materials from our kragen spawn summon our level four fish from the graveyard go into bahamut shark detach material summon the armor torpedo Special feat angler from the hand. Add back to our extra deck the armor fortress with the effect of our full armor dark knight so we can rank up on the opponent's turn, rank up the armor fortress, uh, and that's going to trigger the effect of our full armor dark knight. But you can see, opponent hit us with a Nibiru, and there is nothing we can do to stop Nibiru. We are getting Nibiru, but on the plus side, this will be a very big Nibiru. All our monsters are gone, but our Nibiru token is extra thick. Look at this token. 1,200 attack points. 12,000 attack points. Let's shuffle our fish back into the deck and draw a card, but opponent also has Ash Blossom. Now, we got the one for one, which we can use to summon a Butuniful since we are playing the Butuniful package, talked about it. Um, but unfortunately, we already activated the effect of Buzzsaw Shark, so even if we summon our Tuna, we won't be able to activate another Buzzsaw, so let's just hold it in the hand for now. Hope that opponent can't get lethal. Our... Full Armored XE is not really doing anything at the moment, but uh, we shall see. Opponent, Lifeless Sleep Fish, playing Goaties. Okay, well, Goaties usually aren't that good um, as a punishing deck going second because Lifeless Sleep Fish send to the graveyard doesn't synchro summon until our turn. But opponent also playing Ice Shade, Adrienne. Seen a lot of Adrienne today. Summoning, and that means they're going to go into a level 10 synchro. I was really worried about the Big Chungus. Big Chungus here. Actually, uh, can Big Chungus even clear the token? Yes, it can, because the token can be banished face up but not face down. So Big Chungus would have been triggerable by the shift. Banish the token, get in for big damage, but opponent uh, instead going for the Adrian, Activating the effect of the shift, and they have no way to clear the token. So opponent um, trying to clear the token on our turn with the Goaties, but big weakness of the Goaties, all right? Only activatable in the main phase means the turn player has priority to take one action before the goaties can activate. And our one action is going to be turtling the goatee fish away so they have no ability to synchro summon whatever this back row is. We got to hope it can't stop us. Primal being token attack into the lifeless leaf fish. That's the shark play they don't teach you about in Yu-Gi-Oh school. Let's go on to the next game. On to the next game. We got the Maxi. We got the Crystal Shark, Abyss Shark. One day we'll be playing the Maxi, but it's a level 4 water monster. Opponent, Dark Contract, searching for a DD. Is this a DDD's deck? We shall see. We're going to fire off Maxi. And, you know, I was thinking, opponent, going to Ash Blossom our Maxi. If Maxi is hit, all right, they hit it to zero, replace it with that level 4 water. Ash Blossom is also something they could hit. Ash Blossom, just such an annoying card. Negating your hand traps, it's possible, all right? I, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm crazy that they would go that far, but if they want to change things up, Ash Blossom has been a staple for a decade. If they want to mix things up, they could ban Ash and uh, print some new hand traps, you know? Just to mix things up for, uh, you know, a decade of, of Ash Blossoming. 
Ash Blossom, also so cheap now. If it's cheap, they can ban it. That's just how Konami works. And look, opponent's playing Unchained. Getting the uh, Escape, getting the uh, Unchained Twins to the hand. Going into the old Unchained combo, which is going to get them a Negate and a Link Summon from our field, stealing a monster. Plus, opponent reset their popping trap to let them pop an Unchained, pop a card we control. So, well, let's see what they end on. High King Wave Caesar, that is two spell trap negates. And unfortunately, that is, uh, yeah, no, sorry, not just spell trap negates. Effect that summons a monster. Any effect that summons a monster, it can negate. So we do not draw a level four. We got to hope Crystal Shark on the, the High King Caesar is something that uh, helps us out. But first, we got to pop this Unchained because it's uh, two interactions with that back row. Let's get rid of the Unchained. Hope that Crystal Shark on the DD King, High, High King Caesar, lets us uh, activate our Abyss Shark effect and opponent forgets to negate. Uh, but opponent remembers to negate and we have no more plays, unfortunately. This also could have activated an additional time, I believe. So uh, we had, they had two negates that stops us and the Ash Blossom arrived too late to help us out. So that is going to be game. We got no plays, opponent getting us with the Unchained. These things happen. We didn't draw our Super Poly. Where was Super Poly? In the deck. Sometimes you just gotta get good. Let's go on to the next game. Oh, right on to the next game. We got a Super Poly in the hand. And opponent is passing with no actions, making us not get to use our Super Poly. Very sad. But we get to do the Tenyi Spirit Shathana Silent Angler Crystal Shark play. Let's just special summon all our monsters so we just keep our normal summon going. Um, we can go into the, the Dugaras. We can, uh, yeah, we can draw two discard two. Let's see what we get. Let us discard the full armor trap means we can, oh, we're gonna negate it. All right, we could get this in the graveyard, activate it, and that would've been pretty sweet, but sadly opponent negating with the effect bailer. So uh, yeah, nothing there, but we did get our fish in the graveyard. Now, if we had a level four fish underneath this Dugaras, it would let the white mirror be live. Or if we, uh, you know, if we discarded this Silent Angler, um, you know, the effect didn't resolve, but if we got to discard Silent Angler, we could have used the White Mirror, summon Silent Angler from the graveyard, add another Silent Angler to the hand, and that would be another rank four. So uh, that would have been pretty sweet. Dugar showing off its potential. Very cool. But uh, sadly, not going to happen. Let's rank up the Dugaras, get that Armor Fortress, searching for the other armor spell. Opponent with the second effect Baylor, so uh, they did not brick. They just drew. Uh, they just drew five hand traps. It looks like. Opponent again. We'll see if we find out what deck this is. Set our super poly. Set our full armor trap, which we can use to rank up on the opponent's turn. And this is sneaky interaction. All right, we can rank up into the full armor and activate the second effect in the graveyard. Attach our Dugaris, and that's a, a yoink. That is a fish yoink. We could also rank up into Crystal Zero. This card, um, if it would be destroyed, detach material instead. And the effect to negate is sadly an ignition effect, so can't use it on the opponent's turn. We also get this super poly. But opponent's still bricking. Drawing more hand traps. So is this a free win or uh, or what? Let's uh, activate. Play around Nibiru here, because uh, that is the one card we are worried about. Let's get our two summons. Go into the Ragna Zero. That is three summons. Get in big damage and make sure you know how to do this. Full armor XZ sneaky play. Activate it in the battle phase. Rank up a monster that's attacked to get an additional attack with that full armor. And that is lethal damage. Opponent knows they are done conceding before taking the hit. Love to see it. Sharks still got it. Let's go on to the deck list. All right, here is the shark deck list and we're keeping it just like Jock had it with the one extra card that is the Gozen match. Uh, if you ever draw Gozen match and you go uh, Crag and Pass, you can stop Snake Eyes for sure. Let's go through the deck. We got one Tuna that is summonable and also searchable with the one for one. Two copies of Max C, two Ash Blossoms, two Xeromoras, two Silent Anglers, two Tenny Spirit Shathanas, one Right Hand Shark, Triple Buzzsaw, one Lifeless Sleep Fish, two Silent Sea Nettles, Abyss Shark at three, one Crystal Shark, one Turtle searchable with the Ice Barrier. We got the Nibiru, we got the one for one, Foolish Bear Goods, White Mirror at two, Armored XZ, Super Poly at three, just like he suggested. We got two Call by the Graves, Cross Out Designate, Forbidden Droplet, 
triple ice barrier since we got so many cards to discard it now and we can discard it with the dugaris um ice barrier three actually not terrible at all also you can use it defensively don't forget that we got the full armor dixie and the goes and match in the extra deck we got two super poly targets mood dragon and garura we got the armor torpedo bahamut shark abyss dweller we got the silent honor arc the ragna zero dugaris stealth kragan times two one kragan spawn one armor fortress crystal zero lancer dark knight and the divine arsenal zeus thank you so much for watching but before you go we're going to show off xc sharks if you want to play it in the event all right here you go here is the modified list if you want to play xc sharks in the xyz event we swapped out our super polys put in another forbidden droplet we also had to take the turtle out of the deck sadly and if you want all right this is extra spicy not necessarily worth it if you don't already have the card but gizmek orochi uh apparently doesn't exist gizmek there it is gizmek or okami gizmek okami not a card i have but searchable with the ice barrier you can special summon it if there's two extra deck monsters on the field and you can activate its effects pay 1500 life points to destroy all monsters that are special summoned from the extra deck that is a full wipe of extra deck monsters searchable with the ice barrier might be a good alternative to the kaiju uh, definitely a good option going second as a spicy turtley play so keep that in mind if you have this card or if you have the ur gems to spare you can get this test it out in the event let me know how it goes i'll just quickly go through everything uh in this deck list for the event if you want to try it out um, i definitely will be trying this out in a couple days uh, maybe not the first thing i'm going to try i think i might want to play a fusion deck first or synchro deck could see had a very spicy idea for a deck list bring back an old card that is uh you know one of the favorites of the channel long time favorite card you get to see what it is make sure to subscribe if you want to see that let's just go through here we get the valiant shark lancer xd armor fortress times two crystal zero dark armor and the zeus again like i said thanks so much for watching thanks to jock for joining the channel hope to have him back again for some more quality content and i'll see you guys next time have a good night